Hello again. Uh, this video is going to be a departure from the project uh, approach to show you a specific thing, a technique, I guess you'd call it. And uh, this is from uh, by popular request, so to speak. There's uh, no end to uh, uh, people wanting to get rid of the oxidation on vulcanite stems and there's as many ways to accomplish that as there are people that want to do it. So I thought after having done thousands of these things and pretty much can draw a straight line between two points I would uh, show you my method and uh, let the camera run the entire time so you can uh, time it if you so choose. The uh, patient is an, actually a kind of a neat old pipe. It's a 472 uh, Dunhill, which is a LB variant. From This one's from 1940 and is somewhat desirable uh, to collectors. And as a comparison, Here's a pipe of the same size, same design, and the reason I'm showing it is as a contrast in color that everybody knows that works on pipes anyway, that a Costello uses a type of plastic, a lucite, for their stems, and that the Dunhill is the rubber. And so pretty much equal size and I'm not sure on the camera here with the type of lighting and stuff that we get how much you can see the green versus the jet black but I'm hoping it's enough that to demonstrate the principles here so this is just for comparison let me get closer here maybe there's a chance you can see this thing well enough to do you some good so this is not as bad as a rubber stem can get but it's certainly not in very good shape it's kind of well you can see so anyway alrighty so I'm gonna just start in here and the tools of the trade for me are a little uh, bowl of just plain old tap water a number three uh, pillar file that's however wide that is, maybe five-eighths of an inch. Here's a, uh, a nut seating file, one of those ones that has the sharp edges and the flat wide surfaces. The, the flats of it are smooth and the edges are sharp. This is just a piece of metal. It's actually a type of guitar file, but it doesn't matter. I just use it because it's got a, a good firm square edge. This is just electrician's tape, the stretchy stuff that you can get at, I would have said uh, Radio Shack, but I don't think they exist anymore, but you know the kind of stuff I'm talking about, the color-coded vinyl tapes, all this is. And trusty, rusty uh, Scotch magic tape, the so-called uh, magic tape that's got the... the uh, Whoops, dropped my glasses. Uh, the Got the matte surface you can write on. And three pieces of sandpaper. There's some 320, some 400, and, or I'm sorry, 600, 320, 600, and 800. And those are cut to a certain size. That those, the reason for that will make sense here in a minute. So, my first order of business is always as follows. Take a piece of scotch tape, and this is going to be a little bit closer to the button than the width of the file. The reason being, the whole point of putting this tape here is so that the back edge of the file doesn't put a groove in this area here 
and I'm kind of dropping out of the picture but you can just barely see it and all that this is is a preliminary run here to check the flatness so to speak there's usually a, a few uh, tooth marks that show up and this gives me kind of a uh, sets the the stage so to speak for what's to come now you can decide whether or not you're uh, cutting your stems cleaning up your stems in order to uh, just get them back to black and you can continue to use them for yourself which is what this is actually my pipe I just haven't cleaned it up or taken care of it so I'm not going to do the full on get every little tooth mark out now if I was a dealer of these uh, pipes then that's something you would do you could probably blast it with a little bit of heat some guys use like an alcohol flame and raise the rubber before they do that uh, step I just did but I just kind of want to see how things are looking up close to the button there and through this area and it really looks to be pretty good so I'm going to get rid of this tape and that told me what I needed to know and it looks like we're in pretty good shape so we are now off to the races get rid of some of the grunge here I end up using this grip a lot the reason will become apparent here in a minute my thumb is a bumper which sounds a little strange but you'll see just what I'm talking about okay here is the 320 grit do this number hold it over and it's now square paint on a bit of water and we are off to the races Oh, by the way, the stick that this is being, the sandpaper is being put around are your so-called nail boards, the things that you can get in any, like, beauty supply place. I like them because they're very lightweight and they've got a little flex and bounce to them, but yet they stay flat in cross-section lengthwise. Okay, we've done the, the half closest to the button. Now here technique gets to be a little bit of an issue. Oops. I'm trying to do this for the camera, which makes things a little awkward for me, but you should get the idea here. Okay. Now, people will say, well, hold on, George. You're going to sand the edge over on that. You're going to round the shoulder of the stem. Well, that would be true, I suppose, if I'd not done this a bunch of times and wasn't sure-footed, so to speak, or sure fingered but I'm holding the uh, sanding stick at a 45 degree angle and running up till it hits my thumb and I'm never putting any torque or twist on it so that will keep you from messing up the shoulder Isn't this exciting? Well, 
Well, if you're a pipe guy, I suppose it's exciting. Now, one of the reasons I use separate little pieces of sandpaper as opposed to these emery boards is that the if you use high-grade sandpaper, name brand stuff, this is Black Ice, whoever makes that, I can't remember. Uh, the grit, the sanding element, so to speak, the, the crunchy stuff that they put on there is more uh, finely controlled in size. It's very uniform. And the net result is that you don't get scratches from having a high piece of the uh, the grit because if you get one high scratchy piece every time you make the sanding motion you're putting a fresh deep scratch in there and that just is you're chasing your tail endlessly that way and these pink boards and these black boards tend to have high spots in them or high pieces of grit. They're useful for lots of things, but I wouldn't use them for this uh, process here. Now, if the green is heavy, and this was really pretty heavy, you could uh, start with like 220 or 240. In fact, it's starting to look like maybe I, I should have, but let's see here. The water keeps the sandpaper from loading up and glazing. As soon as it varnishes up, it stops cutting and you have to change pieces of paper which gets old in a very big hurry. Using water this way also cuts down on the dust in the air. In this case almost to zero, which is always a good thing when human lungs are involved. This is pretty thick here. I hadn't cleaned this pipe in many years. Paradoxically, it's because I like it. I just smoke the crap out of it. And the ones I smoke the most, I tend to just let them ride. Get that patina like a scuffed up football, kind of. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, pretty good. We're close enough. There's a little green left down around the base of it here, but we're close enough that I'm going to go up to the next cut. If I got it to completely black with the rougher paper, I would have removed more material than is necessary. If you leave just a little bit so that the next grit is what takes it off, then you've removed the minimum amount of material necessary. If that doesn't make sense, think it through again. Okay, we're now on 600. Kind of like playing in a sandbox here. Or your dog got playing in the mud beside in the ditch on the side of the road. You can wear gloves, of course, but 
skin washes and there's nothing toxic about this it's just powdered rubber in solution with water no harm done Okay, now 600 is where I'm going to start hitting the button here. I'm holding out like a little flap of paper. And just letting the rigidity of the paper itself do the sanding. Anytime you've got a small contact area, you could very quickly produce a flat spot. And that's what you do not want. Okay, let's see what we got. Yes, sir. Okay, there's just a little smidge of some green right down here at the very base. Everything else is looking pretty good, so I'm going to hit it now with some 800. We'll shine it up. We'll be done. Though you can, I see no purpose at all in going past six or eight hundred, depending on the, the compounds you use and stuff on the wheels. But there are people that will sand up to fifteen hundred or two thousand. It doesn't hurt anything, certainly, but it just seems to me to, if it's completely unnecessary, you're just wasting time by definition. Then again, there are people who find it very relaxing to work on pipes, and time not only doesn't matter in the conventional work sense, but it's part of the reason they, they don't want to go faster. They want to amble and mosey and, and just kind of daydream while they're doing it, and that's a completely valid thing. I imagine if I, if I survive long enough, I'll sit on a porch somewhere cleaning up pipes, going as slow as I possibly can while throwing a tennis ball for my dog. Sounds pretty good actually. Now once again my left thumb is blocking. You probably can't hear it or see it but it's being bumped by this stick so that I never go off the edge and then that would create one one slip and you've got a nice little facet on the sharp corner of your stem and that's no good I said corner you mean I meant face I think you knew what I meant there Alrighty. Now. That's looking pretty good. Get my hands cleaned up here. show you how I tape the shank and then we'll move the camera over near the buffer and I'll shine this puppy up okay you can do this with either uh, scotch tape or with the uh, the the thicker kind depending on your comfort level I find this is easier to work with but requires a little bit more skill and application. It's a little bit thicker and what you want to do is put it about one half millimeter from the edge.
you don't want it all the way up to the edge that's because its own thickness is going to shield the slight bit of wood that's sticking out so here we go and depending on your the wheels you use and how accurate you are and stuff even this isn't necessarily a hundred percent required in every case masking like this but it usually uh, it's like an insurance policy it keeps you from bleaching the finish there with any abrasive uh, material alrighty use a little wax Alrighty, so there we go, and I will now step over to the uh, buffer and fire the camera back up and show you where we go from here.